Howdy folks, hope you're doing well. So it's been a bit of a while since I did a video. I think the last time I was in the Basque country, Post Basque. Uh, and uh, yeah, I don't think I've, I'm not quite sure if I've done a video since then. I've been, been around a bit since then, Poland and a few other places, Czech Republic. Um, but I'm actually heading back to the Basque country again next week for work, which is great. Ah, but I hope you're doing well. Um, I, I thought I'd do a video today um, about something a bit different, another minor obsession of mine. Um, so those of you like myself who smoke pipes and cigars uh, tend, tend to be kind of quite used to a couple of things that we perhaps like about those things. For me, certainly, speaking for myself, certainly, one of those things is the strong flavours. And the other thing is the ritual. I love the ritual of preparing a pipe, of preparing a cigar, as well as the, the sort of act of smoking it and the social aspects of it, things like that. So there's lots of little things around smoking of pipes and cigars that, um, that float my boat, really. Um, and a lot of them are sort of pretty ritualistic. Well, I'm not doing a great deal of smoking at the moment, um, but uh, what I am doing a lot of, which, uh, it, which sort of scratches that itch for me, um, is um, drinking mate um, because it's very similar in a lot of ways to smoking a pipe or a cigar, not cigarettes, good lord no. There's a ritual aspect to it, there's a very strong cultural aspects to it and there's also very much a social aspect to it as well. Um, and uh, I tend at the moment, uh, I'm not sure what it is, whether or um, I think I'm not finding myself in situations where I can smoke very easily, so, but I'm, uh, I'm tending not to smoke really up until, uh, until a, a Sunday or a, a Wednesday evening when I'll get onto the Zoom with a couple of the guys and then uh, I'll maybe have a pipe or a cigar then. But in the meantime, as I say, that itch that I'm scratching for that ritualistic social kind of thing is, uh, is mate, drinking mate. Uh, now, I've been drinking mate for probably 20 odd years. I was first introduced to it by an Israeli girl, actually. Um, and I didn't like it very much at the time. It's, it's quite an acquired taste. Um, but uh, it doesn't take long to acquire that taste, I have to say. It's like, uh, like any number of things. When you start to appreciate the nuances, uh, you, there's suddenly like click, something switches, and you're like, wow, this is amazing. So, yeah. Um, and then a couple of years later... I was traveling around um, Portugal and Spain with um, an Argentinian fella uh, and his partner. And um, the Argentinian guy would be making mate first thing in the morning. And, uh, you know, we'd roll out of our cars and vans or tents, or whatever we were in. He would pass the mate around. And uh, during that summer, I got really, really, really into drinking it. It was in the morning, just hit the spot amazingly well. And at the moment, I'm drinking it like it's going out of fashion, really. Um, so I figured I'd just do a quick video. Hmm. Uh, I figured I'd just do a quick video, quick, on, on the basics, what it is, and, um, you know, how, how you have it. Uh, because a number of people have been asking me um, recently about it. So, so first of all, it's a plant uh, that is in the holly family. The name is Ilex paraguayensis. Uh, it's from South America, um, predominantly Paraguay, um, Uruguay, Brazil, um, and of course Argentina, uh, which is where it's probably most famous. Um, in Brazil, I used to have it quite a lot, um, and over there they call it Chimarão, um, and it's, uh, it's, it's slightly different. It's the same plant, but it's prepared in a slightly different way um, and uh, tends to be uh, served in a much bigger queer or pot. So things that you will associate with Yerba Mate is the Mate, which is this gourd, and this thing here, which is called a Bombilla. If you say, it, I believe, in the Argentinian pronunciation, Bombilla or Bombilla. Uh, or bomba in Portuguese. So that's a metal straw, basically, uh, that you drink it through, and that is the cup that you put it in. And I'm going to make some now and show you how to do it. Um, so first of all, loads of different kinds of mate you can get. 
At the moment, I'm drinking a, I think it's a um, Paraguayan one called Pajarito. Pajarito. Um, but uh, other favourites of mine is an Argentinian one, Rosamonte, and another Playadito. Uh, now, ordinarily, I tend to drink it hot unless it's the summer or when I like to drink it cold. And if you drink it cold, they call it Terere. Um, this is a brand I particularly like in the summer. Campesino Mint and Boldo. Um, and that is one for having cold. So, really, really uh, diverse in the kind of flavours, the different cuts, like uh, the Brazilian mate is almost like a powder. Well, it is pretty much a powder. There's no stems in it, for example. Um, the Argentinian cut tends to be uh, con palo, um, which is uh, means with stems. Um, I'll just show you what it looks like. out of my hand there you can see hopefully so you've got a mixture of leaf you've got the uh, bit of stem in there you've got a bit of a bit of dust so a bit of everything I personally like it with stems uh, just preference um, tends to make it a little bit more smoky also helps it to hold together but there are a few things you need to know about how to prepare it properly so first of all let's take our mate and we'll take our queer if we're in Brazil or uh, um, uh, our mate cup, our gourd. Uh, these instantly can be made of a lot of different materials. This one's made out of uh, the traditional material, which is like a gourd uh, or a pumpkin. Um, there's one made out of carob wood. Um, this one is for uh, drinking cold mate or terere, uh, and it's called a guampa, uh, made out of cow horn. Uh, and there is a uh, stainless steel one, which is the one I take with me traveling when I'm going away for work or whatever. Um, all, the, all sorts of different materials. Today I'm going to be making it in my regular go-to uh, little mate cup. So first thing you do is make sure that you're filling the thing. Um, I would say two thirds to three quarters, uh, depending on depending on, on how you like it and depending on a, a couple of other factors like uh, the size of your gourd or, or the size of your mate cup, whatever you're drinking it out of. Um, so I'm filling it up quite a lot there. So it's, yeah, two thirds, maybe something like that. Now, very, very important next step. Stick your hand over the top, give it a shake. And what that's doing is bringing that's all the powder to the bottom or what will be the top because you don't want that clogging up your bombilla so give it a shake turn it over and you make yourself a little mountain like that and all the powder all of the finer stuff then is at the top it sits at the top there and it just helps to not clog up your bombilla or bombilla so the next really important thing to do is take a little bit of cold water and trust me, this really does make a difference. Take a little bit of cold water. And what you're doing is you're pouring the water down the side. You are trying not to wet this little mountain at the top. You want to keep that as dry as possible. So you're pouring the water down the side, okay? Um, so there we go. Now this is cold water or room temperature water. And the reason you do that is because what you want to do first of all is it helps to just swell the leaves um, and uh, and helps them kind of bond together a little bit so as you can see I've poured it down the side I've kept that top dry and now I set that down on something for a couple of minutes I'll set it down on my little cup my little uh, carob wood cup here for a minute um, and then you're ready, uh, or you let that swell up, and then you'll be ready to, to actually fill it up and take your first sip. Now, the next thing is the hot water. First and very, very important thing, you do not want boiling water. It's not like you're not making a cup of tea. Um, it's uh, generally said that uh, sort of around about 70 degrees um, is, is the kind of prime, um, prime spot. Um, but 70, 75, somewhere around about that. 
what I tend to do is I will boil the kettle. Um, I will fill my flask two thirds and then I'll fill the top third up with cold water and that'll be just about the perfect temperature then. Um, now this flask has got a, a very helpful little pouring spout on it because this is made uh, this is made for mate and it just helps you make sure that you're pouring the water exactly where you need it because what remember you want to keep that uh, that little mountain of mate there dry. Um, now the reason you don't want it too hot is because you'll scold the leaves it will make it bitter um, and mate is naturally a little bitter anyway but there's also a lot of other flavors there if you boil the crap out of the water and pour in boiling water you just scorch the leaves and it, it ruins the taste altogether so the next thing you want to do um, this has been swelling now for a couple of minutes while I've been chatting take your bombija this one is uh, there's a couple of different kinds of these you can get as well um, let's see so this is one which has got kind of like a spring on it a spring filter on the end let me pop that over and that's just uh, the water gets kind of pulled through the spring the spring here and that acts as a filter this is a spoon type um, but basically they they've all got a, a, a filter at one end of it just different varieties so you take your bombiza, put your thumb over the top, the idea being that the air isn't pushed through, um, and then you set that down the side of your mate pile there, and just tuck it under a little bit. There we go. And then you can turn your mate cup up the right way, like so. Now, can get a little bit of it takes a little bit of practice to get that that move right but that's important because that's where you tend to find you get some blockages if you put that in wrong but that's okay it's all part of the process now you take your hot water and again you're pouring the water not on top of the mound but just down the hole where your bombija is and you fill that up just until you get to the top without soaking the mate on top. And the reason you do that is because as you drink, uh, that liquid's getting pulled down through the mate. You want to keep this dry as long as possible. It will get wet eventually, you know, it's not a big deal. But uh, that flavour then lasts longer. Um, so what happens is after, you know, depending on the mate you're using, um, depending on how, you know, the quality of it or whatever else, it will get washed out sooner or later. And they call that lavado, um, which means washed out. So you want to keep this as dry as possible on top because it just helps it prevent, uh, helps prevent it getting lavado or washed out. So it keeps that flavour there. So then you, uh, yeah, like I say, just make sure you've got it to where you want it now this the matero who's the person who makes the mate if you're sharing it will have this first one and the reason for that is because it's the most bitter the first pour is the most bitter so uh it's considered um uh, rude really i think to uh, to give the bitter the first pour to to a guest or something like that and uh, in Argentina and certainly other places uh, like Paraguay, Uruguay, uh, prior to COVID, you would um, pass it to the right um, and it would go around a circle. But I'm on my own, so I'm not passing it to anybody, which is great because it means I get to drink it all on my own. Now, the other absolutely social faux pas with drinking mate is once you've actually got your mate cup and your bombilla set and your mate in the pot and everything else you don't faff around with the bombilla you don't mix it turn it twist it take it out stir it or anything else because that will really just screw up that entire delicate balance of nature really the whole thing is um, very delicately put together mm. and um, yeah 
it, it's an absolute no-no. I've had people do it before when I've been sharing it. It's like, ah, you know, because, well, you start to move the leaves around. It starts to bung up the bombizia and, you know, you get blockages and it just messes everything up. So, so there you go. Um, so that's, um, that's, that's about it, basically. So if you're a newbie um, to, to taking mate, one of the things that probably will have happened is uh, you'll do what I did yesterday, which is uh, buy a new, you'll, you'll end up with a new mate cup or a new, um, yeah, a new mate. Now this one I only started using uh, a couple of days ago and you need to cure this uh, for a couple of reasons. The good, if you're, if you're using a natural good, you know, mate, anyway. Now, really, really important to remember, the first thing that you do when you get one of these things through the post, or, uh, well, it's going to be through the post because there's not really many shops that sell these things, um, is there'll be a lot of loose plant material inside here. So uh, if you've got a new one, just get a spoon, uh, put some warm water in it, lukewarm water, let it soak for a couple of minutes, run the spoon around the inside, just scrape out any of that, that loose plant material because that makes it really, really bitter. Uh, it's got a really bitter flavour. Now, eventually, when you have cured your mate gourd, um, you won't get that bitterness from the gourd itself, but it does take a little bit of a while to break in, so keep that in mind if you're doing this for the first time, if you're new to it. Um, you'll see, I'm not sure if you can see, but it's it's pretty pale in there. Um, I'm not sure yet this light's picking up because I've got the sunlight coming in through the window there. But, um, I've literally, you know, this has had, this has been drunk out of once and cured overnight. And when I say cured, I mean, I've taken some mate, uh, some yabla mate, filled it up, put in some water, left it 24 hours just to, to start that process of curing. Eventually what you end up with is um, something like that that's absolutely black inside. Um, and that's completely cured. This is a little leather bound one um, that I've had for flipping donkeys. Uh, and once it's cured inside, uh, you won't have any of the bitterness. You won't get any, you, there's no leak or anything like that. Um, it'll just be the flavor of the matter you get. But it does take a bit of time. Uh, so yeah, that's that's about it for the start of uh, the start of if you're starting mate, if you want to know about drinking mate. Um, there's probably loads of other stuff, but there's loads and loads of really good resources out there on the internet. Um, what I will do, if you're UK based, as I am, I'll put a link to a shop that I use in the bucket underneath the video. I use a company called Euro Shop. Uh, and uh, I get everything from there. Um, my mate, my cups, my bombijas, you name it. It all comes from there pretty much. Um, they're one of the more reliable people. There are a couple of other places. but um, mm. And just a note on the, the properties of mate. Christ, I didn't even touch on the best bit. If you're anything like me and you have, uh, you know, anxiety issues and things like that, coffee, God, much as I love this stuff, can give you the jitters and it can make you a bit kind of, ooh, you know, it can provoke, I find it can provoke the anxiety with me. Um, mate doesn't. Um, mate contains caffeine, but it also contains a couple of other chemicals as well, uh, which act on the brain in a very different way. And um, I used to drink this a lot when I was a student because it really, ching, it switches on the brain. It really makes the brain sharp focused you know I, I use it now I find I get a lot more work done if I'm drinking mate um, so if I'm doing work from home on my computer and similarly if you've got ADD like me or ADHD uh, you find oh squirrel <laughs> you know kind of have that that happen a few times I find with the mate it makes me a lot more focused on my work I get a lot more done get a lot more productive and it doesn't give you the jitters um, it doesn't give you any of the negative side effects that coffee can um, and things like that. It doesn't give you the shit. Um, it's also full of antioxidants and there is a, quite a lot of scientific research which you can Google for yourselves 
um, that uh, that actually shows it's potentially very beneficial if you have blood sugar issues or diabetes. Um, so it can actually help um, stop diabetes altogether. Um, so yeah, loads of really, really good health benefits to drinking the stuff. Um, I am crazy for it. As I say, it replaces a lot of the time the ritual of a pipe, a cigar, whatever for me uh, when I'm not smoking. Um, and uh, yeah, it's cracking stuff. Go and get some. Uh, that's it for the minute, folks, anyway. Um, take it easy. I will catch you again soon. And if you want any more Mate content, let me know. I'll be happy to post some. Um, but yeah, it's 20 minutes. That's enough for the moment. All right. Take care, folks. Catch you later.